Coming up, Holy Land. We'll visit one ancient city that is of huge importance to three different religions as Christians around the world get ready to celebrate Easter. Then, on a roll, the history of the White House Easter egg roll explained. Also, Baby Boom, one zoo in Texas has welcomed a whole roster of new additions. We're there with details. Plus, Worm Moon. It's our picture of the week. And in need of a pick-me-up? If you're feeling mad, frustrated, or nervous, press 1. If you're nervous, go get your wallet and spend it on ice cream and shoes. How these words of encouragement from students turned into a global hit still having an impact today. When I do call it, it gives me joy to see that it's gone so far and that kids are able to give positive thoughts out into the world and share kindness. This is NBC Nightly News, Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. I'm Lester Holt. It's great to be with you guys. We have a terrific lineup ahead, including an Easter tradition still hopping today and a story that caught our eye about the Fort Worth Zoo. You won't want to miss this one. Plus, we'll tell you all about the Pep Talk Hotline a little later on. But first, many families around the world are getting ready to celebrate Easter this Sunday. And there's one ancient city with huge importance to three different religions. Our good friend Richard Engel takes us to Jerusalem in our latest Around the Globe installment. Jerusalem is a city of faith. It has long been called the Holy Land because it is home to three religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. The city has been inhabited for thousands of years, with each civilization building on top of what was there before. Jerusalem is actually filled with tunnels and underground passageways. This grotto used to be for drinking water, and it still fills up today. There are also many vibrant markets here, bustling Middle Eastern bazaars. Sometimes after school, kids go to work to help their parents sell spices and souvenirs. And the food is delicious. Every culture has pizza, and here they have a regular kind of traditional pizza with cheese and tomato sauce. And this is the local pizza. No cheese, no tomato sauce, just bread, olive oil, and a spice mix called zata. Mm. And it's very good. Walking through Jerusalem is like walking through history. Each religion has its own place to pray in the city. Hundreds of thousands of Muslims visit the old city eager to reach the Al-Aqsa Mosque, especially during the month of Ramadan. Nearby, Jews renew their connections to what they call the Promised Land, praying at what is known as the Western Wall. Steps away is the Christian Quarter, which comes alive during Holy Week. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre embodies Easter like nowhere else. It's built around the very places where Christians believe Jesus was crucified, buried, and rose again. Archbishop Isidoros has served here since 1991. Going up to Jesus crucified. The crucifixion site. Under the holy altar, exactly where the icon, there is a hole. Exactly where the cross of Jesus Christ stood. This hole, can we, can we touch you, it? You can go inside, you can put your hand inside. That's a, a great privilege. And this is the place, the anointment stone. After the crucifixion, they put the body of Christ in this stone to wash, to pre prepare before they buried him. So people still now are rubbing their rosaries or, or just their hands on the stone where Jesus' body was washed in order to receive a blessing from it. The final stop on our tour was Jesus' tomb. This is perhaps the most special place in Jerusalem, certainly for the Christian community. This is, this is the tomb. Exactly, exactly the place where the Christ buried and resurrected. 
cameras are allowed in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre with permission, but it's very rare to be allowed to film in its most sacred spot. Do you still have a unique feeling when you come into this place? Of course, this is the center of our religion. Three faiths offering their prayers in one small city. Richard, thanks so much. Back at home, the White House Easter egg roll is set to take place on Easter Monday. Did you know the very first White House Easter egg roll took place back in 1878 when President Rutherford B. Hayes agreed to open the White House grounds on Easter Monday? And it got us thinking, just what's the story behind this tradition? Let's get more from our friend Kelly O'Donnell. Back on a roll. The springtime cheer returns. Hosted by first families for generations, more than 140 years. Welcome to this happiest of traditions at the White House. Year after year, thousands of children are invited to visit the grounds of the White House to test their skills for the ultimate challenge, the Easter egg roll. With presidents over many years <laughs> who started the race. <laughs> The kids armed with spoons and determination to get their prized eggs across the finish line first. Hello, everybody. Is everybody having fun? The fun goes beyond the races. So many bunnies to greet, crafts and games, and stories from celebrity readers. And so on this Easter Monday, children will once again have the run of the White House lawn as they have since 1878. Kelly, thanks. Now for our picture of the week. This past Monday was a penumbral eclipse of what's called the worm moon. This is the term for any full moon in March named for the beetle larvae that emerge from hiding as spring begins. The worm moon entered Earth's outer shadow called the penumbra early Monday morning, giving sky watchers in North and South America the best views of the eclipse. Unlike a total eclipse where the moon disappears from view, a penumbral eclipse results in a slight dimming of the moon as it passes through Earth's outer shadow. A great warm-up for the quickly approaching total solar eclipse this April 8th. Okay, let's head to Texas, where one zoo has been experiencing a baby boom lately, and it's capturing the hearts of America. Our friend Aaron McLaughlin has the story. Here at the Fort Worth Zoo, a baby boom. Since last fall, the Fort Worth Zoo has welcomed a lively bunch of baby animals, starting with Moha a male lion cub who was born in October. He is the first lion that we have had born here in the new Predators of Asia and Africa exhibit. So that's pretty awesome. He currently weighs about 45 pounds. Moha's birth marking an important moment for lion conservation. Having Moha born here is actually phenomenal because he's going to be a brand new bloodline for all of the lion populations for the U.S. And then there's Balu, a male Colobus monkey who just arrived in January. Did you know Colobus monkeys are born with a pink face and all white fur? Between three to six months old is when they'll turn into their full color of black and white. So currently he is the white face and starting to have a little bit more of the black with him and he's starting to teen. So you'll start seeing him put things in his mouth and he is still currently nursing off of mom. Balu's half-sister, Cory, is just a few months older and is starting to venture out a little bit further from mom. Meantime, two-month-old Ruby is making history. This mandrel is the first born at the zoo in nearly 30 years. She is extremely active. She is starting to mouth solid food, but not necessarily consuming. Her face is starting to kind of elongate, like you see in the typical mandrel facial features. In case you're wondering, mandrels are one of the largest monkey species in the world. Cousins to the baboon, these colorful monkeys have an unmistakable face. And sitting at seven and a half feet tall, Corbel the giraffe was born on New Year's Day. Already at three months old, he is starting to eat grain, alfalfa hay, lettuce, other brows. He is going to be one that will like to just scope everything out. They can easily get anywhere between 
16, 22 feet tall. So they come out big, but they also grow fast. And let's not forget about Darcy, the first ever rockhopper penguin to be hatched at the Fort Worth Zoo. Darcy was born December 21st, so she is now four months old. She'll stay the kind of black and white pattern for like a little while. In about four years, Darcy will develop a stripe that will later become her characteristic yellow crest feathers as she grows into adulthood. It's really awesome that we have had such a large baby boom here at the zoo because what that means is that all the animals feel comfortable in all their surroundings that they would want to breed and that's the big win for us here. New additions helping ensure that animals can flourish for years to come. Erin, thanks very much. And finally, in our Inspiring Kids series this week, an update on a story we first brought to you back in 2022. It's about students from one elementary school in California who are spreading kindness and positivity. And now their messages have reached millions around the world. Let's get details from our good friend, Laura Jarrett. If you're feeling mad, frustrated, or nervous, press one. If you're nervous, go get your wallet and spend it on ice cream and shoes. If you've been feeling mad or a little down, know you're not alone. That's the theme behind one special project that speaks volumes. Be grateful for yourself. Everyone is capable of doing anything. You just have to let yourself shine. When you're feeling down, you can call in. If you had like a bad day at school or work, you could call. And Anyone with a phone can call the free pep talk hotline and hear pre-recorded messages from kids offering words of encouragement and life advice. You can do it! Keep trying! Don't give up! That's a very simple idea. It happened to catch on and was just happened to be the right thing that the world needed at that moment. Inspired by kids' resilience during the pandemic, Artist Jessica Martin, along with students from Westside Elementary School in Healdsburg, California, launched the Pep Talk Hotline in 2022. My one was, you are the best, keep trying, never stop. Always stick together. Like never like stick apart, because like sometimes you need people there with you. Two days after launch, that went viral and started to receive over 60,000 calls an hour. And what started out as just a community project really became something that uh, was a worldwide movement. Two years and 15 million calls later, the Pep Talk Hotline is still going strong, thanks in part to donations. I never thought it would get that many callers. It, it's insane. People all over the world, in um, Japan and Kentucky and Arizona, like everyone is listening to it. Reactions pouring in from around the world. Your beautiful voices and great messages are working. Thank you from the East Coast. Keep being you. You're all the most fantastic humans and are doing great things. You really made some nurses in Kentucky feel better on not so great day. You rock. We've had letters from nurses and uh, other first responders, um, people who are struggling with anxiety, people who've said that it literally saved their life that day. The Pep Talk Hotline's success also prompted schools and communities from near and afar to reach out. So Pep Talk is a two-part project. There's a hotline and there's some posters, all with motivational messages made and created by our West Side students. And we ended up working with 25 different countries and all of these kids just simply making a poster with an encouraging word for their community and putting it up on a, a wall or a lamppost for other people to see. Those posters are now being featured in a book due out this summer, with some of the proceeds going towards operational costs and creating a foundation to keep the positivity going. In the meantime, the calls keep coming in. Dear students, thank you all for the hard work and many smiles you've given us and many others. You are all awesome. You have radically altered life for so many folks. Dear Westside School Kindergartners, I absolutely loved your project Pep Talk. Your messages of joy and advice are helping the world be a better place. 
you're making a difference. The knowledge that their words have made a positive impact on the world and that they were, did that as young children, I think has given them tremendous confidence moving forward. They know that one simple word uh, can change someone's day for the better. Your kindness has power. Kids spreading kindness, uplifting others, giving them hope and inspiration. Has this experience with Pep Talk changed you at all? Yes, it made me feel a lot happier. You feel better and it just makes you way happier that somebody cares. When I do call it, it gives me joy to see that it's gone so far and that kids are able to give positive thoughts out into the world and share kindness. Laura, thanks so much. And kids, way to go. Love all that positivity. Well, that's going to do it for us parents. Just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, grab the camera and email a video question to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com, and we'll try to answer them in an upcoming episode. You can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. And just a program note, you can catch a new episode of Nightly News Kids Edition this Saturday on NBC. Check your local TV listings for the time in your area. Thanks for watching, and remember to take care of yourself and each other, and Happy Easter.